the presentations today are going to center around what is the uh, additional information that most recently was part of the analysis of the feeding infant and toddler study done in 2008. Infancy is the most vulnerable as well as the most pliable area where we can actually make a difference. The data I'll be presenting this morning is from a population-based perspective. It takes into account the amount of various foods consumed in a day over the entire population. So it is a per capita public health perspective on the eating patterns of young children. Um, I wanted to look at what happens if you replace the milks children are currently consuming with lower fat milks. The um, purple line at the top shows the calories from all milks as currently consumed in the diet. And then as you go down, the green bar shows what if you changed all the whole milk to 2% milk, how many calories would you be getting from milk? This chart shows the prevalence of snacking among children at different times of the day. As you can see, there's a dramatic upward shift in the percent of children snacking during infancy. And by the age of 12 months, it's clear that the afternoon snack is consumed more often than the morning or evening snack. So if total snacks are a meal, I guess you could say that each snack occasion at about 150 to 200 calories is a mini meal. The data I'm presenting today, and I'm very excited to be doing it, it's, it's very new preliminary data that we've just run using the FITS data. And we um, have estimated usual food intake distributions. Most people believe that as Americans we consume too much protein. And we probably do, but here we're trying to look at lean protein contributing certain things to the diet. These are just some examples of how children could accumulate those excess calories from added fat and sugars from not very uncommon food choices. This is a synthesis of some of the factors that affect feeding infants and toddlers, the first of which is exposure. We know that children in utero, uh, Julie Manella's data, show that um, children exposed in utero to the taste of the maternal diet uh, are more likely to accept those foods in, in early childhood. We also know that the more a child is encouraged to eat, the less likely they are to do so. Exposure to these FITS data has been exposure to a really rich data source, which I think fundamentally raises fundamental questions about the quality of diets in children and adolescents. And I hope I've pointed to some strategies that we can begin to employ both clinically and in, and in other places that touch parents, uh, how we can begin to change these uh, food intake and prevent the kinds of chronic diseases that begin in childhood like obesity and cardiovascular disease. Thank you.